Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I have a lot of information to share with you today. Um, first of all from the results of antibody testing in Germany and second of all prepared a group of um, a lot of data prepared by a group of doctors in Alabama who are very concerned about what's going on and um, have provided some answers uh, to some of the common questions people ask. So I'll start with the antibody testing in Germany. I watched an interview that was done on a television station with Dr. Hendrik Streek, who is the director of the Institute of Virology and the Institute for HIV Research at the University of Bonn. Community testing in Germany has shown the same result that we've seen in so many other areas, uh, Northern California, Los Angeles, New York, um, every place this is done, you find the same thing, lots of cases, and COVID-19 is not as fatal as we thought before. His study was conducted in one of the hardest hit areas of Germany, which was Heinsberg. 15% of the population had antibodies. They were infected and didn't know that they were. The written mortality rate was determined to be 0.37%, one-fifth of what it was thought to be before. Same thing again in other areas. And he said, we can assume the rate of infection is very high. Most people are asymptomatic. He was asked in the interview about herd immunity and whether or not it made sense to continue to lock people down. And he said, and I think a lot of us have, have conceded, look, at the time when nobody knew what was going on, they, we were, they were being given fake data, but, but let's just say they made the decision to shut everything down for a while to get a handle on it. But when it's become increasingly clear that this is ridiculous overreach, and he says that it's no longer warranted. Um, in fact, when the virus passes from human to human, it becomes less, um, uh, less lethal, which is the best way to go forward. So the best thing we could do, all this mask wearing in public, is preventing the transmission of the disease to uh, achieve herd immunity. And of course, all this locking people down is weakening their immune systems because they are not out with other people. That's probably why in New York, the hospitalization rate is the highest in the quarantined people. So anyway, um, Bill Gates was asked about this type of community testing and uh, he, he's not for it um, because what he doesn't want is people thinking that herd immunity is happening or whatever because his vaccine agenda is to, is to uh, remember he's paying for all that tattoo technology so we can all be tattooed and given permission to leave the house. He's another one of these people who is so much smarter than all the rest of us. He's like Barack Obama and, and uh, the Ferguson guy and the other people uh, who are telling us what to do, but they don't do it themselves, you know. He's so much smarter than the rest of us. And gosh, if we were smart, we'd just follow along with what they say. But Gates isn't for the community testing. He'd rather wait for a vaccine. All right, so I found this, um, this very long Q&A and I'm summarizing it here because it would take an awful lot of time to go through all of it. Um, there was a central author, but it was prepared by a group of doctors in West Alabama. Um, the group collectively has over 100 years of practice. They've treated hundreds of thousands of patients who were uh, suffering from infectious disease and their experience includes mission trips in which they've treated patients on five different continents. And the reason why they prepared this is to counter the misinformation campaign that is what we are subjected to every day if we choose to watch it or listen to it. So they, they outline a discrepancy in their own state. Um, the author says, we were told in March of this year by our state officials that Alabama was on pace for 5,516 deaths and would be short over 21,000 hospital beds, but the numbers were way off. Um, a month later, there were 4,700 cases and 113 deaths. And in the county where the primary author lives, there has not been a single death. So the, so the public health officials predict 5,516 deaths and they actually have 113 and the hospitals are closed. Nothing changes. There's no amount of flattening the curve that these people respond to when it comes to just saying, go back to work, go back to school, false alarm, we're just done, okay? That, that, that is, that's a sensible thing to do, but they're not gonna do it. Um, 
So uh, they talk about truths and lies and opinions, and I'll tell you if it's a truth, a lie, or an opinion as we go through this, but uh, one of the lies that's commonly told about uh, in the media is that we don't know much about coronavirus. Um, the author says it's one of the media's favorite lies. It's much scarier if it's unknown, and that's the whole thing. we got to gin up panic because people will do what they're told if you keep them panicked enough. And as it turns out, it's easier to do that than I think anybody ever thought. We know that coronavirus is a zoonotic, zoonotic disease, its natural hosts are birds and animals. We know that four forms of it cause colds every year. It mutates and it evolves just like the flu. We know sometimes it can become deadly like SARS and MERS. We've done medical studies on coronavirus as a coexisting illness in patients in the past. And so we know a lot about it and there's nothing mysterious about what's been what's going on. And by the way, Again, I think this is a ridiculous defense, but I'll just, let's go with it for purposes of just starting from a point where we might be more inclined to, dis to agree and disagree. At the beginning of this whole thing, when everything was locked down in March, um, maybe, you, maybe in a court of law you could justify it. I'm not exactly sure, other than the law says the health director can do anything, including make us sing jingle bells in the front yard while standing on our head. Theoretically, she could do that. But there's just absolutely no reason why in May we are still in this situation largely. Um, here's another lie. COVID-19 is more infectious than influenza. And here are the data and their data, very similar to what I've been reporting here and many others who are actually thinking, which seems to be a skill that's just evading a lot of people right now. This is one of the lies, the two lies most often quoted by the millions who call national radio programs or post on social media. The evidence is overwhelming. First of all, COVID-19 was first identified late December, early January. A little over three and a half months in, in March, we had two million confirmed cases globally. Now, by comparison, according for the National Center for Biotechnology Information, influenza is responsible for up to a billion, with a B, uh, infections annually. You can go onto their website and confirm that, by the way. I'm sure that they would like to take it down, but they can't. Flu season is basically from the start of October until April. At the flu's three and a half month mark, that works out to 583 million cases globally. Even accounting for the fact that COVID-19 is underreported, that's a huge difference. Okay, so we're talking about by mid-March, we had two million, like we've got about two million confirmed cases in mid-April, as opposed to um, um, a billion, a billion infections worldwide on an annual basis. Influenza is more infectious. Drawing from our own experiences, when regular influenza gets started in a daycare or elementary school, they often have to be closed for a short period of time because otherwise everybody gets it. The most students in one class we could remember was 23 out of 25 at the same time with the flu. Currently daycare classes um, in both Tuscaloosa and Jefferson counties have been closed this year. Contrast that to what you know about coronavirus. The NBA tested hundreds of players, staff, and media to come up with 14 cases. 14. Um, another lie, COVID-19 is more dangerous than influenza. And by the way, the, the, you, know, the, you can check this out. One of the things that the, the primary author says throughout you just check out the data. I mean, the people screaming at me haven't checked out the data. And by the way, checking out the data isn't watching the mainstream media tell you things. Like, I mean, I've been telling you this for weeks and weeks and weeks. The mainstream media lies here or data. You know, so it's not reporting to me what <laughs> what Rachel Maddow showed, said today. I mean, that's that's the mainstream news reporting the party line. All right, so um, COVID-19 is more dangerous than influenza. This is a lie spread by the medically uninformed, according to these people. Even among those who do get it, most under 60, including almost everybody under 21, will never know they had it. Of the 2 million people who have tested positive for COVID-19 globally, most have had mild to no symptoms. Contrast this by the three and a half month mark of flu season, the flu had resulted the regular flu. 2 million severe cases requiring hospitalization, 290 to 670,000 deaths annually. Think about that, okay? Think about that difference. Truth, COVID-19 is more dangerous to the elderly and immunocompromised. And they say that doesn't mean anything in and of itself because everything is more dangerous to these unfortunate people. It does mean that we should be trying to protect them. And there isn't a single public policy that I've seen that is, except for Sweden, that is actually trying to protect uh, the older vulnerable people. Truth. 
it is now almost impossible for anyone in the general public or general medical community to know the actual number of deaths from COVID-19. And I will tell you what they say, because it confirms this is a group of physicians, all right? So I like to report on what physicians and researchers at Stanford University, et cetera, say, because then it's not all about, am I qualified, right? So, and you can find this online and, and verify everything. And I don't want to hear from anybody unless you've read the thing online and verified it yourself. Because if you go to these websites and see different numbers, then send me screenshots. But this is what they say. All right, so the reason why we don't know is because sometime in March, U.S. hospitals started testing all emergency room patients and every patient who died regardless of cause of death for COVID-19. I reported that on Tuesday. Those patients are being included by the media in COVID-19 death tolls. Yes, a victim of a car accident brought to a U.S. ER who passes away will be tested for COVID-19. Two of the most egregious examples of misrepresentation involve infants, um, which, will, uh, which they talk quite a bit about. One of the fascinating things about coronavirus from a medical standpoint, children are almost universally immune to deleterious effects, which means why have we closed the schools? COVID-19 has not been associated with pediatric illness anywhere, not China, not South Korea, Italy, or Spain. So on March 29th, when BuzzFeed News and an Illinois paper, The Guardian, led with the headline, quote, the first infant has died in the U.S. after testing positive for the coronavirus, it caught our attention. The article goes on to say the infant's death was announced by Governor Pritzker of uh, his wife went to Florida fame. And depending on which article you read, either Pritzker or Dr. Eziki, director of the Illinois Department of Health, said, if you haven't been paying attention, maybe this is your wake up call. On April 2nd, CBS News, and I had reported this, Connecticut, uh, reported Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont had announced it's with heartbreaking sadness today that we can confirm the first pediatric fatality in Connecticut linked to COVID-19. He went on to say it's like, likely one of the youngest victims of the disease anywhere. The problem is neither of those deaths were attributed to COVID-19. On April 3rd, the Hartford Current correctly clarified that all patients who die in Connecticut, Connecticut hospitals were being tested for the virus regardless of the manner of death and that Connecticut's chief medical examiner had not ruled COVID-19 to be the infant's cause of death. And by the way, Lamont has still yet to come out and apologize for the misinformation or correct the record. Even if he doesn't apologize, he's a public official and he should correct the record. They don't do that. They let the lies hang out there so that they can keep the sheep who are addicted to the fake news in line by watching this frightful stuff. Oh my gosh, infants are dying every day. Um, just yesterday, uh, and this was written in mid-April, NBC uh, uh, 5 Chicago reported that the Chicago Department of Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Allison Arwitty, said it is preliminary believed, preliminarily believed that the infant in Illinois did not die of coronavirus. And, and so you have the news and you have the fake news. And I know that it's not fashionable in some circles to talk about the fake news, but I don't know how else you explain it. Think about what I told you about the New York Times on Tuesday. The Department of Health is categorizing 3,700 people who didn't have coronavirus and weren't tested for it because we kind of think they had it. This is what medicine has degenerated to. It's unbelievable. Um, according to uh, a, another data science source, from January 1 to April 1, the worldwide deaths from COVID-19 were 46,438 as opposed to 121,993 for influenza. Okay, so the bottom line is we're social distancing and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and, and the, there was no social distancing going on during that period of time. And the deaths were much higher, all right, from, from re just regular flu. On April 2nd, 2020, the National Vital Statistics System, which is part of the Centers for Disease Control, provided new guidance regarding, regarding the issuing of death certificates. This is for our friend on Monday who's still saying 80,000 people have died in the United States. No, they haven't. All right, listen to this. COVID-19 was to be listed if it was assumed to cause or contribute to a death. For example, if somebody dies from pneumonia, respiratory distress, or COPD, and has any coronavirus symptoms, their certificate will list COVID-19 as the presumed factor of death. Since shortness of breath, fever, and or cough will be exhibited in all respiratory illnesses, every such death could be recorded as a COVID-19 fatality. 
and it's happening across the board. And the doctors say, we have never seen any disease handled in this way. It completely defies any scientific method to work based on assumption. Even doctors opposed to reopening the economy should be upset because we will never have accurate numbers concerning the disease. To complicate matters further, if your city attributes enough deaths to COVID-19, it can request billions of dollars of federal aid. And is that why the city of New York decided to categorize 3,700 deaths that were not confirmed COVID? as COVID-19, they will get more money from the federal government. So by the way, there's a whole big incentive here to gin up the numbers because you get more money if you're a hospital admitting COVID patients than regular respiratory uh, uh, distress patients. You get more money if you're a city and you gin up your numbers from the feds, the more deaths you have. So perhaps uh, Governor de Blasio is going to bail out his terrible economic policies by just ginning up the numbers. I mean, what else are we supposed to think here? What else are we supposed to think? Truth, the current policies instituted by our local, state, and national governments are causing greater health problems than the virus ever will. According to the Wall Street Journal, and this was in mid-April, 22 million Americans have filed for unemployment in just four weeks. When you consider spouses and children, it seems reasonable that up to 70 million Americans will eventually be affected by that number. Staying at home is not without consequence. These individuals are at significantly higher risk of depression, suicide, domestic abuse, and other mental health issues. This stress is making them more likely to become ill from all manner of disease. Many have lost their insurance. Some will become divorced. Hundreds of thousands of medical procedures have been canceled or delayed. There is another threat to our health. Rural hospitals have closed in large numbers in recent years. The situation with COVID-19 has placed many more community hospitals of all sizes at risk. Many are empty and bleeding cash. So um, I agree with all of this easily um, uh, verifiable. I mean, I spent a lot of time verifying this, but if you're gonna scream at me, I want you to say, spend the same amount of time verifying these things. Don't just call back and or write to me and say, well, you know, somebody on CBS News said, well, CBS News faked a line at the health clinic in, in uh, Grand Rapids, so I don't know I'd be hanging on their every word right now and reporting it to somebody who actually checks things out as the, as the, 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 the uh, truth. All right, so um, then they issue an opinion in the middle of this. They say, the way in which the media has pushed fear nonstop amounts to psychological warfare against the country. If it hasn't occurred to you that we have heard one story and essentially one story alone for literally two months, well, that should have aroused suspicion. Why isn't, and this is my opinion, why isn't David Katz, John Ioannidis, um, and uh, some of these other well-respected um, physicians who are associated with prestigious institutions and think differently, why aren't they on every news show? Why aren't they? because they don't agree with the party line. And the only thing that can be reported is that which is approved by the powers that be. Truth, the media will continue to fight reopening of the country by stating that experts predict a spike in deaths if we do so. We would assume those are the same experts who initially predicted 2.2 million U.S. deaths, revised to 200,000 and then 100,000 and then 60,000, and then ordered testing all U.S. deaths just in case they had coronavirus because we weren't on pace for even 30,000 uh, before the change in policy. In other words, because of the fake death certificates and the bad test, I even haven't gotten to that, and that will be a different uh, topic for a different day, but because of the bad tests and the uh, fake death certificates, we have no idea. And it's highly likely that this um, that we wouldn't even be talking about uh, 50,000 deaths if they hadn't ginned up based on fake death certificates. Truth, not every country has shut down the economy and none of those countries have suffered higher rates of death because they've kept their economy going. Now, everybody wants to scream and holler about Sweden, but remember, context. You have to look at context. Sweden's nursing homes are huge facilities with hundreds of people. They're compared to Norway, which had a lower death rate, but Norway's nursing homes are tiny, tiny compared. So when you have a single case and a huge facility, you're gonna have a lot more spread in these elderly people. But that has nothing to do with 30-year-old people going to a bar tonight. It has nothing to do with healthy kids going to school today. Um, opinion. Medical organizations have failed the country. Literally every doctor in America should know everything listed in their document. So why haven't organizations like the American Medical Association and others as, and state organizations presented this information to their governors and the president? Because if doctors and their organizations 
who are capable of looking at this the way that they should be looking at this. This is what I'm telling you, not what they say. We wouldn't have had an opiate epidemic. We have an opiate epidemic in this country in part because of the pill mills. But we also have an opiate epidemic because pretty girls who used to be cheerleaders in high school working for Purdue Pharma told medical doctors that there was an epidemic of untreated pain in the United States and that OxyContin wasn't addictive. They cited a two paragraph editorial in the New England Journal that none of these doctors bothered to read and they started writing script. Now, when you've got a group of people, and I'm not, there are exceptions, and I know so many exceptional doctors, and I hate to, I don't even, they're, they're exempt from what I'm saying. But when you, are, when you have a medical education system that's turning people out who are this mindless and, and this easily led, could we have expected anything other than this to happen? In fact, what's going on right now is the expected end or of a medical system that has been careening out of control with callous disregard for human life and unbelievable recklessness for a very, very long time. Um, truth, if the narrative didn't fit COVID-19 terror, it was ignored. We know this has happened locally and nationally and the politicians have done it and so have the uh, media. The media is really stuck to the party line, which they pretty much do. Truth, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is making a fortune and he wants you to stay home. In addition to owning Amazon, he owns the Washington Post. Just read any headline or article it's ever written regarding a plan to reopen the, comp the economy. Do with that information what you will, but we hope it means you stop ordering from Amazon and support local businesses instead. In other words, he's part, every, look at everybody who's promoting this ridiculousness. Some of it's just stupidity, politicians and healthcare professionals, but a lot of the people promoting it have an agenda. Truth. COVID-19 has treated, uh, it's been treated like a world ender. It's not even remotely close. And they summarized the data that has been sprinkled throughout the document. It's infected just over 2 million people in the world, not killed 2 million people, actually not even sickened 2 million people, just infected. So it's 76 million short of infecting 1% of the world's population. It's 998 million short of infecting as many as influenza this year, the vast majority of which are sicker than the average coronavirus patient. The world has never shut down for any disease before and it chose this one to do so. Truth, quarantine is a period of place or place of isolation in which people who have been exposed or infected with a contagious disease are placed. The government has used it to impose shelter in place on healthy people and close businesses. There are words for that, but quarantine is not one of those words. Truth, this is not a medical crisis, but a political crisis. There's a saying in politics, never waste a crisis. And this is apparently true, even if the crisis is fabricated. We briefly debated leaving out politics, but the reality is that most have already figured this out and there's no explaining the phenomenon that's COVID-19 hysteria without talking politics. Every time President Trump argues for reopening, the press and the Democrats gnash their teeth and talk higher death tolls, and they do whatever they have to do to gin them up, including falsifying death certificates. De Deborah Burke said on the six o'clock press conference, I watched the words come out of her mouth, we want you to put COVID-19 on the death certificate, even if it was not the cause of death. And the press sat there like little lambs, sucking it up and dutifully reported it to the public. The governors of Illinois and Connecticut who incorrectly reported infant deaths are Democrat. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who has gone so far as to restrict her state's residents from mowing their lawns and planting flowers is a Democrat. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards, who threatened to permanently take licenses from open businesses and organize a special police task to arrest anyone in groups of more than 10, he's a Democrat. Mayor Walt Maddox is a Democrat. He told us in March that if he did nothing, Tuscaloosa County would experience 3,686 deaths due to COVID-19. Think about that for just a second. It was first identified in Wuhan, China, in a city of over 11 million people. China has a population of 1.4 billion, and at the time of his presentation, COVID-19 had killed a little over 3,200 in the entire country of China. Tuscaloosa has a population of just under 184,000 and is considerably less densely populated than Wuhan, China. That number is not only meant to do nothing, that number is only meant to do, to incite fear and indicates a serious lack of insight and judgment. And I would, um, I would say indicates a sincere uh, desire to hurt people deliberately. 
If you love your children, enjoy sports, or know anyone who owns or is employed by a small business, you should be angry, the doctors say. Very angry. We can absolutely take steps to protect the elderly and vulnerable, but everything should re reopen immediately. Millions of high school seniors have been deprived of graduations and proms. Millions of high school athletes have lost their spring season. Thousands of NCAA athletes have lost the same. Some will permanently lose their programs altogether due to financial issues associated with the coronavirus response. Your kids are at home when they should be with their teachers and classmates. Your neighbors have been prevented from working and businesses built over decades or generations have been lost or threatened. Absolutely none of this was or is necessary. Amen to that. But it's a voice of reason. You'll never hear these doctors on the mainstream news. No, CBS is too busy faking long lines for coronavirus testing. Uh, New York Times is too busy scaring everybody, even after acknowledging that they're ginning up the death rate, uh, probably to get more money from the government. I mean, why else would you do it? Induce panic. Governor Cuomo, we're going to hire more people to do contact uh, uh, tracing so we can quarantine more people, even though it increases the hospitalization rate because that's public health. That's a good health strategy. It just defies logic, and I'm just hoping that the more I talk about it, the more other people talk about it, the more we'll get other people on board and, um, and, and at some point in time be able to do something about this. Thank you for watching. Pass it on to anybody who you think would enjoy. I use that term kind of strangely or benefit from watching. It's probably a better way to put it. I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.